Welcome to this short service of night prayer, Compline, brought to you on behalf of Southerminster, the Cathedral Church of the Diocese of Sutherland, Nottingham. If you have joined us for this service in previous weeks, you'll know that we begin with the reading of the Gospel of the Day, followed by a short reflection, and then we will say the ancient office of Compline together to complete the day. A reading from the Gospel of St Luke, chapter 9, beginning at verse 7. Now Herod the ruler heard about all that had taken place. And he was perplexed, because it was said by some that John had been raised from the dead, by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the ancient prophets had arisen. Herod said, John, I beheaded, but who is this about whom I hear such things? And he tried to see Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's Gospel reading is a strange little paragraph, seemingly out of place in this chapter from Luke's Gospel, sandwiched between accounts of Jesus' ministry and how he and his disciples were bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The reading tells us that Herod had heard all about this activity and was perplexed about it. The paragraph does make a little more sense if you're aware of who this Herod is and what he has done in the past and many of you will be familiar with his history. At the time of Jesus, the land of Israel was a satellite state of the Roman Empire. When Jesus was born, Herod the Great was in power, a man notorious for the savage way in which he dealt with potential rivals – a fact borne out by the way in which he ordered the murder of all the two-year-old children in Bethlehem, in the hope of killing Jesus and thus preventing him from becoming a future king of the Jews. When Herod the Great died, his kingdom was divided amongst his sons, and the Herod we meet in today's reading is Herod Antipas, who became ruler of Galilee. Antipas had a complicated personal life. He divorced his first wife so that he could marry Herodias. But at the time when Herod met and fell in love with Herodias, she was married to Antipas's half-brother Philip. And she also appears to have been Antipas's own niece. John the Baptist spoke out about this to Antipas, with the result that Herod imprisoned him. And in Matthew's Gospel we read of the way in which Herodias and her daughter engineered the death of John the Baptist, manipulating Herod Antipas into ordering John's execution. Hence Herod's perplexity about Jesus. For Jesus seemed to be continuing the popular religious movement that had begun with John. And yet Herod thought this had ended with John's death. Herod Antipas appears again in the Gospels and in the story of Jesus when Pilate sends Jesus to Herod as part of Jesus' trial. Luke tells us that Herod questioned Jesus and hoped to see him perform some miracle. But gaining no satisfaction from this, 
Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt and mockery and sent him back to Pilate for his fate to be decided. It appears that Herod Antipas managed to hang on to power in the region of Galilee for some 40 years, but he eventually fell foul of the political ambitions of one of his own nephews. And Herod Antipas ended his days in exile, possibly in Spain, on the orders of the Roman Emperor Caligula. Perplexed and at the same time curious about Jesus, Herod missed the opportunity to learn of God's love and mercy and in the end lost his kingdom in the harsh political realities of his time. The reason we know these details about Herod's life and death is not only because of what we discover in the Gospels, but also because of the work of a first century Roman Jewish historian, Josephus. His book, The Antiquities of the Jews, provides useful background material about the historical period covered by our scriptures and about characters we meet in this time including Herod Antipas. So what is the significance for us today of this first century politician, Herod Antipas, about whom we know a surprising amount from the Gospels and from the historian Josephus? The fact that Herod ordered the execution of John the Baptist and was complicit in Jesus' trial and execution would be enough by itself to secure his place in Christian history as a man of power and violence who played a significant part in the beginnings of our faith. But there is also more to reflect on here. These links between the story of Herod and the stories of Jesus and John the Baptist help to ground our faith and beliefs in an historical context. Herod, Jesus, John the Baptist are real people in a specific time and place. Our faith is not based on myths or legends or fairy stories as some critics of Christianity might claim. It is rooted in historical facts, recorded in near contemporary writings. And one last lesson from Herod for our times. Herod Antipas lived in a turbulent period. He placed his faith, based his security in political power and violence but would see that power and status removed by others equally hungry for power. We too live in times of turbulence. In our days of Covid anxiety, in what do we place our faith? Where do we find our security? The Office of Compline reminds us of the answer to that question for those who follow Christ. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. As we read night prayer together, let us take the opportunity, as we need to do daily, to place our trust in God, who has made heaven and earth, the God who has been revealed to us by his Son, Jesus Christ, who walked this earth in history. And let us find our security, our place in faith in him. Amen.
You will find the order of service for Compline on the website. And please do join in with the words in bolder type. We will say together Psalms 16 and verses from Psalm 31. If you would use the alternate verses. And we observe a short pause at the midpoint of every verse. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you, before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. Psalm 16 Preserve me, O Lord, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land. Upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. And in the night watches, he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death. Nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. 
Psalm 31 In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. Take me out of the net they have secretly set for me, for you are my strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is prowling round like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. Resist him, strong in the faith. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. This night let us remember before God in prayer the needs of our world and let us thank God for his goodness to us. We thank God for sending his son Jesus Christ true God and true man, who walked this earth and went about doing good and showed God's great love for us in his life, death and resurrection. We pray in these times of fear and anxiety that we may place our trust in God and find our security in him. We pray for our troubled world and for all we know and love for their well-being, that all may know the love of Christ for them. And we commend our world in all its needs to God who has made heaven and earth. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. 
May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen.